What's up YouTube? In today's video we will be taking a look at this Panasonic Let's Note CF-SZ6 that I had imported from Japan back in September. Well, I bought it on eBay, but it shipped from Japan and I had to pay 50 Canadian dollars in char in customs charges, so it therefore it is an import by definition. So, I wanted to make a video on this machine after having it for a while and just over look some of its unique features and some other stuff about it. The you know, Let's Note laptops were only sold in Japan, so so yeah, they were never sold outside of Japan and North America only gets the tough books. They do not get regular consumer laptops from Panasonic. So we will be taking a look at this machine overall and it does have some unique features on its exterior to start with. So we got a DVD drive on this one, a full-size DVD drive, not mini ones. And this is a 12-inch laptop. Yeah, they actually fit a DVD drive in a 12-inch laptop, which I find is pretty amazing. And then we have headphone jack, full-size SD slot. The power switch is an actual switch, it's not a button. And to the side, we have an actual wireless switch. And you actually can't turn on the wireless in Windows if that switch is off. So it's a physical hardware switch to turn it off. All three of the USB-A ports on this machine are 3.0 or 3.1. There's no USB 2.0 and there's HDMI. And then we have a VGA port, which one thing I noticed with a lot of Japanese market machines is that they do have VGA ports on them still. A full-size Ethernet and a... Kensington security slot. The back we do have the label being almost entirely in Japanese. And the battery is actually remove user removable. You don't have to open the machine to remove it. And we actually have a SIM slot. I did try to put my SIM card in there. It does register and read it, but I can't get a signal, so it might just be something to do with my carry Canadian carrier's cellular bands not being compatible with whatever they use in Japan primarily that this machine would have been designed for. And then when we open it up, we do have the Japanese keyboard, which has which I have our time typing on this sometimes just because some of the symbols are moved around. Like, you can see the at sign is not at 2, so when I type in an email address, I always mess up the first time. And then we have a circular trackpad. It is rather small, though, so I'll be using a mo mouse when we power on the laptop. Is That trackpad is too small, but, but it probably was never designed for the hands of a North American, so... And yeah, that's about it for the exterior part of that. Now we'll start her up. And I've noticed this machine to be rather quick on boot, like it's not slow at by any means. It's actually pretty quick and it's only a SATA SSD. Although, yeah, the speaker is a down point, unfortunately, of this machine. It's only one speaker and it sounds like that of a smartphone, so that's one thing I'm criticized Panasonic for on the design of this machine. So we'll just get ourselves logged in there. And there's the desktop, and this is the original wallpaper from its Japanese install of Windows. I just took it off the computer when I decided to put a U.S. English install of Windows on here because, well, yeah, I don't understand Japanese, so, yeah, it's, that's, so I just have the U.S. English install, and sorry for the stuttering, I don't know why that happens. We won't be in this computer too long. We're just really going to go over its specs because, well, it's just Windows. There's nothing interesting about it, really. Everyone uses it pretty much. Well, most average people do. So for specs, we have a Intel Core i5-7300U as the CPU. And we have 8GB RAM. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered. That's one thing I do not like about this as well. You can thank Apple for starting that trend, as it seems like as soon as they started, the, all the other companies started to follow. So if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, you can't. The SSD is upgradable, though, as it is just a standard 2280 M.2 SSD, so 
if you wish to upgrade the storage, you certainly can on this machine. You just can't upgrade the RAM, so... Yeah, that would, that's unfortunate that it is soldered. For storage, we have a 256GB Samsung SATA SSD. It comes up as 237, which is normal for drives to come up as less. But it is a fast drive. Like, this thing boots up very quick, as you would have seen earlier in the video. You're looking at a 1920 by 1200 IPS LCD display, and yeah, it's an IPS display, and this is easily one of the best, sharpest looking displays I have out of any of my computers. Like, it, and especially being at only 12.1 inches, it actually looks amazing with its high resolution, because the small, smaller and higher resolution the display is, the better that high resolution will look on a small display just because the pixels will be smaller than if it were larger. You can already see I'm running Windows 11, but one thing I don't get is that we do meet all the requirements, including Secure Boot and TPM 2.0, but for some reason Microsoft are like, oh, we don't want to support your CPU, but we'll let your system support everything else. Like, they ask for TPM 2.0, then I have a computer that supports it, and they say the CPU is not compatible. But of course I just use the usual bypass install that I always do with every machine I put Windows 11 on because everything else I have Windows 11 on does not have TPM 2.0. It's just something I thought I'd include because it's kind of odd that they would not support, um, that it would say Windows 11 is not supported on the CPU even though I do meet the secure boot and TPM 2.0 requirement to meet all of the other requirements required to run Windows 11. In that physical wireless switch I was talking about earlier. Everything wireless turns off and... You can't... Well, it's not supposed... Yeah, see, it just shuts itself back off because it cannot be turned on due to... The fact that it is a physical hardware switch. So Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular all shut off on the machine if the... Switch is put to the off position. Now I just turned it on and everything turns back on. This is actually, I've actually liked that this laptop has a physical kill switch. Most laptops haven't had such a feature since the 2000s. And the only other computer I do have with such a switch is my two XP machines from the early 2000s and one laptop from 2009. Both of those have to also have the wireless switch, but anything after that that I have, nope, no physical kill switch for the wireless. And now for a speed test, just to test the Wi-Fi speed of this machine. And this, what we usually get at the end of the speed test is about what I average on a 1 gigabit Wi-Fi network. Which is what, it, which is what I have in my house. Although this machine only supports Wi-Fi 5 because it was manufactured before Wi-Fi 6 existed, so... Yeah, of course, it's not going to get any Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. So we get 20 ping, of course, which is normal for my location. But, yeah, the download's 401, upload's 91. That's about what I average with this machine and some other laptops I have that also have similar Wi-Fi cards. And that was to censor out my IP address, and yes, using a package of Pocky was intentional because, well, I'm reviewing a Japanese laptop, so why not censor out my IP address using a Japanese snack? <laughs> I think it's the perfect match. So there's not really anything else to review on this chan um, channel, uh, this laptop much, but overall it's a pretty good machine from the time I've been using it since September. I don't use it as a daily machine, but... Even that user-removable battery still lasts up to like 6-7 hours, which is really good. So I don't know why laptop manufacturers don't keep the user-removable batteries. And they can make them thin, because I've looked at some of the current generation Let's Know models, and they're as thin as, the, uh, they're as, thin as other laptops nowadays, and they still have user-removable batteries. So I don't know why other laptop manufacturers don't do that like they I think they should because not because of the repair part but if you you could carry two batteries and just 
swap them out when the next one dies if you needed more power instead of having to charge the laptop. So overall this machine impresses me pretty well and it cost it around maybe 400 Canadian dollars after after taxes and customs. Shipping was free so I didn't have to pay for that. And I would say for that price this is an excellent machine you can buy. You can find these exact same ones on eBay for around 250 to 300 Canadian dollars roughly depending on the specs. I would avoid the ones with 4 gigabytes of RAM just because the RAM is soldered, so make sure you get the one with at least 8 gigabytes. I believe they go up to 16 if I'm correct, and up to i7 CPUs instead of the i5 that mine is equipped with. So all in all, this is a good laptop, and, and I really like it. The first laptop I've imported, and I would like to get more laptops that I can't buy in Canada as easily. So, yeah, this is it for this video, I guess, and be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts, and this is the end of the video, and I will see you guys next time.